Oh, hey all, and welcome back. And today I have a quick review for you of two Diaclone figures, the Gamma Verse Alter and the Treadverse Alter. Now, if you're not familiar with Diaclone, this is a reboot series from an ancient line that predated Transformers and kind of gave us Transformers. But let's just quickly look at the packaging. It's actually some really nice photos. I like the effect they've done back here where they've kind of added a CRT scan to the image and put it in the background and reduce its opacity. I also like the application of type, the tactical mover series, some different modes on the sides, as well as a bunch of configurations on the back. Now, obviously the language on this is geared towards the Japanese market because this toy is more in line with the Japanese fan base as that's where it started from. So anyway, enough of the packaging. Let's get this open and see if it's worthy of our collection. And here's everything out of the packaging. We have a set of instructions along with some decals to go on. And this is how they are packed in the blister. We have a primary frame. We have the torso units. We have some wing add-ons, shield add-on, our Diaclone drivers, as well as our guns, wings. And what's really interesting is that this comes with a set of sprues with additional hands and weapons. Actually, maybe not hands, actually just additional weapons, shields, swords. So that's, that's interesting that that is the approach they took. Now, if you don't have already, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some model kit snips so that you could cleanly cut these off the sprues. But let's go ahead and check out the individual components. First things first, let's look at these pilots. We have these two diaclone pilots. And as you can see, they are super tiny. I think they're very highly detailed, especially for the scale. And th this, and this comes in line with why Diaclone is so expensive is because you're getting a lot of detail and mechanics packed into a very small package. But we have the two different drivers here and I'll set one aside just so we can look at some articulation. We have in the shoulder, we have elbow, rotation at the head. We have chin, bend of the knee. And that's it. And while it sounds like it might be, a, oh, there's actually an ab crunch too. Uh, it's a lot considering how tiny this is. This is more articulation we get in some transformers that are 10 times the size. So what's cool about this is that the pilots actually can ride in the suits. So we have the two frames and two cores here. And the way this works is you, you open this up and this slides out. So they are on a gear slide mechanism. So they work in conjunction. And that gives you access to a cockpit. So we'll see how easy it is to actually put one of these guys in here. So you just line it up, push down, and we have a pilot in the suit. So we fold this down, that locks them in, push it down, and the whole thing closes. That's really cool. So the core has no articulation, but it has all these hard points for plugging stuff into. And we do have some movement at the neck here where you can move the head up and down and some rotation up here at the top of it. Now the way these work, what's what I really enjoy is the fact that it's really up to your imagination. You can do what they intend or you can make your own configurations. So we're just gonna fold that in. We're gonna lock the core, actually fold that back and then set the core in here. Lock the back in. And then fold the arms in. And then we have our basic mech. So let's go ahead and repeat on the other one. Take the hips like so, take our core, peg it in, fold this up, peg it in, peg in the shoulders, and then we have robot two. And as you can see, I mean, the frames are pretty much the same. They're just different colors. We have two different core units, which I think makes them different enough. And then with their add-ons, 
there's enough options here to make your own configurations to make them unique. So if you wanted a whole selection of these, you don't feel bad for buying additional ones because you're not really buying the same figure over and over again. It's just some shared components, which gives you the ability to switch them between each other. So these could actually be swapped back and forth. And like so, you can see how easy they swap between each other. Just as easy as it was putting it together. But just to quickly look, we can go over some of the hard points. So we have a series of hard points back here. Forearms, elbows, shoulders, other side of the forearm. Then we have on the hips and up here on the thigh, inside the calf, outside the calf, under the foot, there's a couple. And there's some pegs as well, so we might be able to utilize that for some configurations as well. And then we have this gear that can be folded down. It's all pretty tight. So with this little piece here, so that adds a little bit of, to the gimmickry. But yeah, this is this is just cool. Um, I really like the aesthetic. It's this very industrial, flat edge, hard edge surface with some bevels in it. Lots of nice little molding in there. Uh, as far as articulation goes, we have rotation of the shoulder. We have rotation of the bicep. We have outward movement at the shoulder. We have double hinged elbow. Rotation at the wrist. We actually have articulated fingers. And then, so they can move up and down as well on a hinge. And then for waist, we have rotation at the waist. We have hip, outward, rotation, double bend at the knee. Then for ankle, forward, back, a lot of, a lot of downward. So not, not so much forward, but that might be useful for some things. And then we have tilt side to side. Yeah, these share the same articulation because they're the same chassis, but that's, that's a lot. And this is a little figure. And we can get into some comparisons now, this is a bootleg. However, is the take on their smaller mech series. And so that gives you an idea that these are a little bit more than twice the mass of what you're getting with that. And these, uh, especially the official ones, are kind of close to the same price. I mean, by the time you paid U.S. retailers, you might pay $40 to $60 for this, which makes this seem like a deal because that's about the price that is. Now, of course, the bootlegs ran from, I think, around $20 US to $40. Um, sometimes more depending on what was included. But with that said, we do share some of the port sizes. So you can use weapons and stuff off of this and add on to these and vice versa. So that does add to the play factor and expandability of the line. And this is how they compare with the big boy. Now, I wasn't actually sure how small these were gonna be when I bought them. I was hoping there might be some cross compatibility, but of course the hard points and stuff can be shared among these and they're designed to work together. However, me wanting to use the core from one into the other is likely not going to happen. Um, these are still two different things. They just share some port sizes and aesthetics. And so they do work together in some respects, but it's not like you're going to be able to use the small ones to really change out the big one. You kind of have to go with ones that are in the similar series to make them work together, I believe, in that respect. But that said, this one is more than twice as much as what these were. So this one is quite awesome. Now this is the comparison that I think will really put everything in perspective for people. And to tell you if you have any interest in this line because this is a deluxe weaponizer class transformer and these guys are three times the price. That said, the tolerances, the quality, the add-ons, much nicer with the Diaclone series. But for those budget conscious people, that's going to play into effect when you can get something like this for around 20 or less, depending on sales, or pay 60 or more for these. I think that holds a lot of people back from getting this line. I also want to show these with Robot Build, which I think is a close contender as far as a very cool mech design that allows you to customize and change things out. The difference being... Robot Build gives you a lot more options because more pieces come apart and have a lot more variations that you can change out. Difference being, they're a little bit larger than this line and the price is not that much more than this line. So that's sort of where these fall in. They sort of fall in maybe the $60 to $80 range 
give or take, where they top out there. And you have an unlimited amount of combinations you can do where these, while awesome, are a little bit more limited and of course have a much wider range of cost. Now these are the primary mech modes. We have wings for air assault and then we have these cannons for the tread version. Now what I do really appreciate is the stands that do pop out the back. They help give support and balance the figure once you've loaded up. And another thing that I noticed that I just actually really love is the fact that you can double joint the knees, bend them backwards, and have a chicken walking mode. I always enjoyed mechs that had chicken walk legs or chicken legs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it was very cool. But this one has these cannons that go on here, as well as these connector pieces, which could probably utilize for doing different custom creations. Uh, and since there's so many pieces here, I'm not going to go over all of them and do you know, the infinite combinations. But for our air assault, we have on the sprues, uh, two different sprues, but we have shield, guns, rockets, more of these special connector points, some various weapons and other kinds of connector points. So we have two of each of those. And then for our tread unit, we also have weapons and rocket add-ons. I think that's rockets. Yeah, little rockets here. And just a variety of guns. Uh, not as many point configurations. Uh, there's a couple like this one and this one, this double peg, which is nice. But it is something. In addition to these modes, you can also see in the back of the box here, we can go into sort of a plane mode as well as a flying mech mode or alternate type of mech mode. And then same with this one. We can do sort of almost what looks like a Star Wars mech just because of the color scheme and that canopy. And then we also have sort of a machine mode for a, a flyer or track mode, something like that. But the more I mess with these, the more I discover. And I feel like you could spend all day just exploring these. And that, I think, is what is the wonder and the greatness of this line is the fact that there's so many configurations, so many hard points, so many different points in cross compatibility where we can flip the hands in and we can put other pegs on there. Uh, these little things that transform and just take one simple idea, which is very sturdy, very solid feeling and maximize it as far as your creativity, as far as the enjoyment of mech. Uh, it makes me want to get more of these. Of course, they're pretty expensive, especially as we get the bigger figures. I really like one of the really large ones, but that is crazy money for what those go for. But there are people that collect those and there are people that get multiples and they make some really cool stuff. So anyway, if you think Dia Clone is something you'd like to collect, make sure you leave a comment below, like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time.